And there's much to be said and taught in the, the literature, especially in the mystical literature, on this thing called fire. In Hebrew, esh, or ner, we will use flames. Hanukkah, we light the flames of Hanukkah, the lights of Hanukkah. So when you look in the Bible itself, you'll find immediately fire mentioned a number of, number of times. Besides the fires that we talk about in a negative way, which I'm not going to address, the fire that consumes Sodom and Gomorrah, but we talk about fire, we talk about light, let there be light, right? Day one of creation. You talk about <clears throat> the flames of the altar that consumed the offerings that were brought. We talk about the menorah, the menorah that was lit each day in the temple, which actually Hanukkah commemorates and rededicates after it was desecrated by the Greco Syrians in the period of time when Hanukkah happened. The menorah, which was lighting actual flames from pure olive oil and a flame rising on its own on the seven branched candelabra menorah in the temple. And then there's Hanukkah flames, and there's Shabbat candles, and there's holiday candles. And even when it comes to, God forbid, the negative, when a person passes away, we light a Yisker candle, a flame. Why? Why a flame so significant? So the brief of it is because of a verse in Mishle, in the book of Proverbs, a beautiful verse. It says, Ner Hashem Nishmat Adam. The flame of God, or the candle of God, the lamp of God, is the soul of a human being. Huh. Comparing a flame to a soul. So though we cannot see a soul, we could see flames, a flame is the closest, appro closest approximation reflecting what a soul looks like and the properties of a soul and how it behaves. So the flame is more than just a flame. Flame is actually, for us, a model. You could say a prototype of what the soul is truly like. And by studying a flame, flames, you can understand and get a sense of what your spirit is like. 